Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service from Holy Trinity. You're most welcome from wherever you're joining us. This morning in our readings, Jesus calls Nathaniel from where he was sitting under the fig tree, a reminder to us that we are known and loved by God wherever we are, whatever we are doing. And so in the knowledge of that great love, we begin our worship by singing verses from Bright, the vision that delighted. Light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also, also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, who is worthy of all thanksgiving and praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave the Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of his Spirit, you establish us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into his marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. And so in stillness and quiet, let us confess our sins. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. When we were disobedient to your will, forgive us and heal us. Your son, our saviour, was born in poverty in a manger when we were greedy and reject your ways. Forgive us and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. When we show cowardice and lack of vision. Forgive us and heal us. The Magi followed the star to find Jesus the King. When we are reluctant to seek you. Forgive us and heal us. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, Orlando will bring us our first reading. The first reading is taken from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. 
the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. At, then the Lord Samuel call, called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. That is such a great story, and it has within it one of the best bits of conversation in the whole Bible. Philip, so enthusiastic, says, I've, I've, we've found the Messiah, 
He comes from Nazareth and Nathaniel. The best put down line, dripping with scorn, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Or to put it in English terms, can anything good come out of Scunthorpe? But Jesus praises Nathaniel for his honesty. Yes, he might have had low expectations, but he knew that and he named it. And that is a starting point. Can anything good come out of Scunthorpe? And Philip says, come and see. And just that phrase overturns the grimness and the scorn and the despair. And so that should be our prayer too, that we can be people who come and see. And the pattern that there is good, but we don't necessarily know where and how to find it, is exactly the pattern we hear in the first reading that Orlando read to us from 1 Samuel as well. It's a familiar, it's a, a moving story. You've got the old Eli and the young Samuel. The old Eli worn down, going through the motions, and yet when the moment comes, he finds the wisdom to help the young Samuel, who hears but doesn't know what he's hearing, doesn't know how to listen, who is there but not there. And he is the one who is trained to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, which is so similar to Philip's comment, come and see. And although that wonderful story in 1 Samuel chapter 3 is about learning to listen, it's not the beginning of the narrative. In the Bible, there are those four big books, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, and they're a long narrative over so many verses and so many centuries. They're the narrative of God training the people to listen and trust and training the kings to rule and guide. And so that we can see the pattern in that whole story, we're given an introduction. And the introduction is the story of Eli and Samuel about learning to listen. And another story that happens just before Eli and Samuel. And I'd encourage you to go back and read it. But let me remind, remind you, Elkanah, a faithful man in the people of Israel, has two wives. One is fertile, lots of babies, and the other, the wife he really loved, is Hannah, barren. A really grim situation, and she prays and cries and acknowledges her vulnerability and from that God gives Hannah Samuel and in response to that Hamuel dedicates Samuel back to God and before she gives her one child back to God she sings the most sublime song my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Well, actually, she doesn't say that, because that's Mary's song. That's the song we know as the Magnificat that Mary sings in the beginning, but it is modelled on Hannah's song. They are really the same, and the themes are the same. God brings life where all appears barren. Those who are arrogant or proud 
or rely on their strength to boss other people around, they will be brought low. And the needy, those who know their need and dare to name it, those who feel like dust and acknowledge it, well, God says, that's a good starting point. And let's see what we can do by bringing you up. Hannah and Mary sing the same song. And one thing more, they say, both of them, that God will judge all of us. Not to judge in the English sort of way, saying guilty or innocent. Judgment is about revealing. It's about opening up. It's about showing what true character is like, both for individuals and for nations. And that's obviously what the United States of America needs now. It needs, in the proper sense, judgment. True character to be revealed. And it happens, it happens here in 1 Samuel and in all the following books. This was a golden age of Israel. Samuel and Saul and David and Solomon. And the great heroes were often shown to have feet of clay. And yet, when they acknowledged that, when they admitted how fallible they were, that is when grace shines through. In morning prayer on Thursday, the leader of our daily prayer encouraged us to consider the soil now. It's mushy and unattractive and sodden with all the rain and looks lifeless. But she said, consider the soil and wait to see the snowdrops breaking through. That was a come and see moment. And so we can say with Nathaniel, can anything good come out of this pandemic? Philip says, come and see. And Eli teaches Samuel to say, with great eagerness, speak Lord, for we are listening. Let us pray. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our God in heaven. We pray for your church as we come together to worship from our separate homes. We come in expectation and we pray that we leave with inspiration to sustain us throughout the week. We pray that like the wise Eli, we can interpret your wishes. And like the obedient Samuel, may we humbly reply, speak, for your servant is listening. In our New Testament reading, we heard how Jesus chose Philip and Nathaniel. May we always be ready to listen and to accept when Jesus chooses us to do his work. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for the world. 
We pray for the United States of America and the inauguration of their new president, Joe Biden. We ask that this is a peaceful and uplifting event. We pray that it marks the beginning of a new conciliatory era for America at home and throughout the world. We thank you for the vaccinations being offered in our own country. We pray that wealthy countries like ours do not forget those countries who cannot afford large quantities of drugs. We pray that we share our vaccines with those less well off. We especially pray today for the enormous vaccination programme starting in India. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. Dear Lord, we thank you for our community, for those who love and sustain us, for those who smile and forgive us. Like Eli and Samuel, and Philip and Nathaniel, we need each other to understand and grow in faith. Make us ever vigilant to each other's needs, quick to serve, support and encourage. May our gentleness with each other reflect your gentleness with us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We continue to pray for our health workers on the front line. Many are now suffering from shock and trauma, from working long hours and in such distressing circumstances. Comfort and strengthen them to do this challenging work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have special needs at the moment. We pray especially for Janet Shepherd, Joan Bettison, and Ken Joyner. We also pray for all those who have died this week. Comfort their families in their bereavement. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. In a few moments of silence, let us offer our own prayers to our Father. God of glory, we rejoice in our fellowship. With the, the shepherds, shepherds, the angels, and the magi, the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and all the faithful departed, in your unfailing love for us and for all people, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government of pe and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn verses from Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voice to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, glorious God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As we remember all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God is here among us, light in the midst of us. Bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you.
So I would add to Tom's welcome at the beginning to say how very good it is uh, to be together wherever we are, united in spirit. Just a few personal notes. Can I remind you, in case you didn't hear last Sunday, that we have a third year student on placement uh, with us training for ordination. This is uh, Sue Watson's final year. She should be ordained in the summer and she's with us for three months until Easter. So uh, greetings and welcome today and I'm sure you'll be joining one of the breakout rooms and will receive, um, I trust, a kindly and enthusiastic welcome. Welcome to Sue. As you may have heard in the intercessions, Janet Shepherd is not well, has been taken into hospital and as soon as I know more and can get the message out, I will do so. Uh, she is a long, faithful and tremendously kind member of this congregation, so please do remember her and her family in your prayers. And finally to say that Jonathan Hedgecock is away today in Wyke, uh, leading worship for them while their vicar is uh, sick and off duty. I was at a meeting with the bishop only earlier this week, and he was commending all sorts of ways that different parishes can support one another. And so we're very pleased to be in partnership with Wyke and other local parishes supporting them in this way. Thanks to Jonathan for traveling there. Thank you. Let us pray. Creator of the heavens, let the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child. Guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn verses from Hail to the Lord's Anointed. <laughs> Son of God, perfect you in the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
excellent to see everyone together. Jonathan will have made the long journey back from Wyke just in time to preach at Compline this evening at 6 p.m. if you'd like to join us here in Holy Trinity. If not, we look forward to seeing you again next week. It's a great joy to be together in our virtual church as always and every blessing for the coming week. <laughs>